Beth, report to Morning, emergency. Morning, Thelma. Yes. Hi. What are you two looking so glum about? Nothing, really. I guess it's the cold weather outside. <laughs> All set to take over? All set. Mrs. Brewer told me to come back and relieve you on your coffee breaks. Thanks. Great. See you later. So long. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, the Ellen Quartermains left some invitations for both of you to pass out today. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, there's one for you, Diana. Thank you. And one for me. Great. Oh, it's an invitation to their Christmas party. I don't think I'm going to be able to go if Heather's, if Heather's going to be released from the sanitarium. No, Diana, you can't go into hiding. Yeah, any messages? Hello, Rick. Yes, I think you do. I have a couple here. There you go. Any word from Forest Hill? Well, Jeff went up to uh, see them today. I have I haven't heard anything yet. Well, I know it's a bit early, but just the second you hear anything, would you let me know? Yes, I will. You're not scheduling an OR, so where should I find you? No, I would just be making rounds. I have nothing on schedule unless an emergency comes up or something. Okay, I'll be sure to find you. Hi, Rick. Hey, Rick. Hello. Wow, well, look what the cat dragged in. Hi, guys. Well, what brings you guys here? Oh, we thought we might assist Rick in some surgery. Oh, dear, we smarty oh, here. Well, actually, we thought we'd stop on by and help decorate the Christmas tree in the children's ward. I mean, since we're on a vacation and all. Huh, marvelous. We'll see how marvelous it is after they've finished. <laughs> yes, we want a super-duper job done, men. Right. Don't worry, don't worry. They'll be supervised. Look, boys, why don't you wait over in the lounge until Audrey and I can take you up to the children's ward? We have to get to our offices first. Why can't we wait here? Yeah, and listen to you guys gossip. Oh, Jeremy. Hey, hey why not? I agree with them. Uh, a lot of action here. I wish uh, you weren't too old to paddle, both of you. Oh, before you all take off. I've got something for you. Oh, here. Yeah. Yes, the Quartermains request the presence of Dr. Mrs. Hardy. Ah. Oh, thank no? you, Rick. Huh. Quartermains. Mm -hmm. I don't see one for you, Rick. Uh, they, they did say that it would just be a family and a few friends, though. And I don't think there's any reason why I would have been invited in the first place. No, excuse me. See you later. Oh, man, my big mouth. I just wasn't thinking. Thinking about what? Look, do what I told you, boys. Go on over to the lounge and wait for us. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. See you later. Now, don't be too upset about Rick. That's true, Ann. People just have to get used to the fact that uh, Rick and Monica no longer mean anything to each other personally. Come on. Yeah. Take a seat, will you? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello, Rick. Well, Monica, now what dost thou think of this ornament right here. Whatever you say, Emma. Such enthusiasm. Oh, it's a beautiful tree, isn't it? I think it's lovely. You know, darlings, I think it's the prettiest tree that you've ever had. You know something, darling? You say the same thing every year. <laughs> yes, and perhaps I'm right every year, dear. I do think Lana's right. I think the tree gets prettier every single year. Do you really feel that way? Well, Alan, I don't know many people who go around saying that their tree gets uglier every year. Forget it. Ah, foolish me. There I was thinking you were getting into the Christmas spirit. I should have known better. Oh, Alan, dear, please don't make cryptic remarks. Yes, uh, Alan, would you, um, hand me that box of ornaments, please? What, these? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad it's going to be a smaller party this year, aren't you? Very glad. You know, at large parties, I always feel afterwards that I talked incessantly to everyone and never said anything of the slightest importance to anyone. But then, of course, perhaps I never do. <laughs> well, then what are you doing? Oh, just making sure that you've invited everyone. Are you sure you did, uh, Monica? Well, yes, I'm fairly sure I did, yeah. Mother, that's last year's Christmas list. Well, of course it is, dear. It's an excellent way to check and make sure that nobody's been forgotten. Oh. Oh, okay, fine. And, Alan, don't take that condescending uh, voice with me, please. I am not senile, you know. Yes, oh. come on, Alan, please. I'm almost through anyway. I'm down to the W's now. Aha! You see? I do not find an invitation checked off for Rick and Leslie Weber. Why not? Oh, well, Alan, I didn't, uh, I didn't think you wanted me to invite them. 
You didn't think I wanted you to invite them? I didn't want you to invite Rick, Monica, but I certainly wanted you to invite Leslie. Thank you, Mother. I apologize. It's a good thing you did double check. Ben, uh, you uh, are insisting that I invite Leslie. Indeed, I am insisting. I work with her every day. It's going to be very strange if she isn't here, Monica. All right, then, Alan. I will have to hand deliver the invitation because I really don't trust the mails this time of year. Uh, now, what about that other Weber situation? Well, what do you mean? Well, I see that Jeff Weber is on your list, but I, I ran into Audrey uh, Hardy the other day, and she tells me that there's a possibility that Jeff's wife may be allowed home for Christmas. There it is, Mother. What do you think? Oh, darling, it really is beautiful. I, I, I think it really is the best ever. I agree. <laughs> now, darlings, do let's try to have a merry Christmas. Alan, Monica? Lila, of course we will. Uh, perhaps it'll be a little more festive this year, now that we have Alexandria with us, don't you think? Well, it certainly will be lively, that's for sure. Yes, uh, well. Uh, now, darlings, I think if you don't mind, I will go upstairs to uh, our wing. Oh, dear, I do miss Edward so much now that he's become involved in all this back-to-work business. Of course, the whole thing is utterly ridiculous. I mean, after all, we've made our money. He doesn't have to work so hard. I know that, Mother, but a man has to have an outlook, really. Yes. I mean, look at Alan and his involvement with Susan Moore. Involvement? Allow me to take a moment, Mother, to clarify that rather vague remark by my wife. I am involved with Susan Moore as co-owners of the campus disco, that's all. Oh, well. Let's uh, try not to fuss too much, dear. Uh, with, the, uh, with the decorations, I mean. Yes. My poor mother can't take the strain of our relationship anymore. Well, even poor Monica cannot take the strain of our relationship anymore. Then why don't you try to do something to ease some of that strain? I have been making every effort, Alan. I have been pleasant to your mother. I've been decorating the tree. However, you have seemed to want to make nasty, snide comments all morning. What are you talking about? You were the one who just this moment made that ridiculous remark about Susan Moore. And you've never made a remark in your life without an ulterior motive. Now, I want to know what you're up to. I am not up to anything, and I'm definitely not up to a ridiculous conversation like this. Now, if you'll help me clean up this mess, I don't want to ask Stella to do it. She's got too much on her mind at the Christmas party. It certainly isn't going to be a Christmas like last year, is it? Hardly. Last year, Christmas time, our son was first born. I don't think there was a happier man on God's earth. I thought I was more fortunate than anybody alive. Well, that seems like a very long time ago. A lifetime ago. <laughs> Another life entirely. That's it exactly. Who could have known, Monica, that at that time, that's what you were angling for, was another life entirely. Look, Alan, if we're going to uh, go on with a conversation like this, I really am not up to it. No, we're not going to go on like this. We're all going to put on brave faces, and we're going to be a happy little family group at Christmas time, aren't we? Alan, you have your son. He is one year old, he's healthy, he's a beautiful baby boy. I mean, that should make you very happy. Oh, I'm happy about him, Monica. He's the only bright spot in my entire life. You know, I really feel sorry for my parents having to pretend that they see the two of us happy together. They'll be putting on their bright, cheery faces coming down on Christmas and saying, Oh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Dear Lord, Monica, how long? you go on living in this sort of a lie. Now, why don't you give me a divorce, Alan? Why don't you let me go and have custody of my son? I could never do that. Well, then, partial custody. Alan, for heaven's sakes, you could go out. You could make a new life for yourself without me. I can't. Why? Why, Alan? You're just as miserable as I am. That's right, Monica, I am. But it'll never be over between us. Never. And if it ever is, it'll be when I say so. What is with you? What is with you? Do you find some sort of sick, perverted enjoyment in all this? No, I hate it. But I have to put up with it, and so do you. Well, I can't, Alan. I simply cannot. Oh, yes, you can. And you're going to have to. So you better relax and try and find whatever happiness you can out of being Mrs. Alan Quarterman. Gee, that's funny. What is? 
Well, I can't find an invitation for Rick or Leslie to go to the Quartermain party. Oh, I guess I can understand about Rick not being invited. Oh, Amy, but... maybe all of the invitations haven't been sent out yet. No, because I looked at all the W's and there's one Amy, for Jeff Weber. Why don't you make the entries into the log and stop being so nosy? Yes, ma'am. Good girl. Well, did we get Jeremy and Tommy to work in the children's ward? Oh, yes. They're very hard at it. And they're being quite marvelous with the children, I might add. And Audrey and I are going over to the lounge. She wants my expert opinion on some very important assignments. Yes. Assignments, mm -hmm. eh? Who's to do what and when for the Christmas party? Oh, well, that sounds mighty important. Oh, we all know what Dan Rooney's going to be doing now. No oh, indeed we do. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, What's all this? Oh, Rick. Do you have a minute? Sure. What would you like, Steve? I've been meaning to ask you how your new clinic is coming along. It's coming very nicely, thank you. We ought to be ready for the formal opening very soon. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, a lot of thanks go to Leslie. She has been just super in helping getting the place ready. Oh, she's been a great help with the Heather situation, too. Yeah, indeed she has. We're all very grateful to her. I don't know what my kid brother would have done if Heather could come home from the holidays and... Having to stay someplace else, I think at Leslie's is the only answer. Oh, I think staying at Leslie's is a perfect solution. I do, too. It's certainly good neutral ground. Yeah, it'd probably give Heather a chance to spread her wings a little and see if she's ready to come out to the real world. Rick, I hope you won't be too busy with a new clinic to, uh, to miss our hospital Christmas party. No way. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh, I'll good. Oh, you will? Well, oh, yes. I'm, we've been making out a list of yeah. what people are going to be doing, and uh, Diana and Anne are going to hand it out to everyone. All right, well, whatever I can do, don't hesitate to call. Just let me know. <laughs> See you all later. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, Diana, if you need me, I'll be on 7, seeing a patient. All right, Rick. And any word at all from Forrest Hills, please let me know. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Not me. Oh, I'm fine. Diana, why don't you go? You sure nobody else wants coffee? No, I'll take one when you get back, okay? Okay, I have to run an errand on 7 anyway. Thanks a lot, Thelma. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Nick! Ma'am? Any word from Jeff? No, no, not while I was at the desk. Uh, I would like to talk to Jeff a minute. Sure, of course I do. You look very pale. You want to go over to the lab? Oh, do I? Yeah. Are you feeling all right? Well, uh, it's not that I feel bad or anything. I mean, it's certainly nothing you could put your finger on, but that's, well, that's kind of what I want to talk to you about. All right. I was wondering if I could have a, if I could have a checkup. Well, as a nurse, you must have some idea of how you feel. Now, if you can't put your finger on it, fine, but give me some idea of what's wrong, what you're feeling. Uh, it's mostly... Well, I get, I get this kind of feeling of panic, you know, and then, then I start hyperventilating, and I just want to make sure that nothing was, was physically wrong with me, you know? All right, we'll schedule a complete cardiac exam. Thank you, I'd really appreciate it. Diana, do you feel that this could all be caused from nerves, emotions? It's very possible. I mean, I... I've been in this sort of state of panic, you know, ever since I found out that, that Heather was coming back for the holidays. Yeah, well, that's understandable, but I think we ought to check this out medically anyway. Okay, right. thank you. Oh, listen, I, I've been away from the desk for far too long. I'm sorry, I dragged you away before you even had a chance to get your messages. No, I'll do that right now. But what I want you to do is be sure and call my secretary, and you arrange for that exam. Okay, I will do. I'm probably being silly about all these fears about Heather, you know? Taylor, when she hears the news. Mm. Hi, Diana! Oh, my God. Hi, Diana. What? Hey, Diana, let me take a look at you. Okay. Oh. Hey, that's, that's a pretty bad Let me get burn. some ice. I'll be right back. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Would it be a wild guess to say that you heard about Heather? Hi. Well, hi. Listen, yourself. I'm sorry if I hung you up, but uh, Mom wanted to get over Leslie. She didn't want to wait for me, so I stuck her in a cab. I'm enough, sorry. Enough, enough. Would you just tell me what the news is? What happened? She's coming home. That's great. Yeah. You don't sound exactly thrilled. It's just been a tough day already. Well, I'm sure I can understand that. Mom's been a bundle of...
nerves all morning. I thought she might calm down a little bit after Nelson told her that Heather could spend the holidays with her, but she was still pretty uptight about something. Jeff, you have to realize that Alice knows exactly how you and Anne feel about each other. Yeah, yeah. I guess that could be it. But, Rick, I'm telling you, for some reason, Mom is scared to death about Heather coming home. We all are, to some extent. Yeah, especially Diana. I gotta find her and tell her the good news. She may already know. She was here earlier. I didn't see her. Yeah, she was here, and she happens to be very worried about the entire situation. Oh, come on, can you blame her? What bothers me, Jeff, is that Diana, I think, is making herself physically ill because of these emotional problems. And I think all of us have to see to it somehow that Diana and Heather don't get together while they're here during the holidays. I think that's a very good idea. I don't want Diana going off the deep end. Should we take a look? 